Hello folks, today we're playing Ashwalkers, a narrative survival game where you play a squad of characters marching through a volcanic wilderness. Uh, you choose your path, encounter NPCs and wild animals, make difficult choices and manage your supplies. Uh, it is all about the choices, um, you can lean towards combat, stealth or strategy, which will affect how people treat you and how things go. This is the volcanic tundra. According to data collected from the other beacons, the squad should be able to find the next beacon in the vicinity. So we did play an early prototype of this ages ago, when the game was called something else, but now it's been utterly transformed, and is out now on Steam. This is by Nameless13, and thanks to them for sending me a key to this. And so we join the game in this second region, after I did incredibly well in the first region, gaining the trust of the wolves, and more besides. And you can see in the bottom right, everyone's got hunger, warmth, and energy, and all of those are pretty damn topped up at the moment for me. I need to keep moving though, currently misty the weather and it's the um, day 29 afternoon. Our supplies, uh, we have plenty, we have food, we have medical supplies, we have wood for fires as well. And we can make camp at any time and there's a bit of camp management we'll have to do then. What I'm looking out for is kind of these um, resource gathering nodes. Um, we'll get some random encounters every so often and we'll have to possibly lose some of our supplies maybe or maybe we'll um, even gain some. So at the moment all I'm doing is um, clicking on the mouse and they will follow. Uh, the camera does what it does. It looks like we may have to do some crafty footwork here. But I think we're okay. Oh, there we go. Uh, this is a slow paced game so it's not like um, constant action or whatever. It's, there's a lot of meditative qualities about this. And it's all... Oh my god, it's actually getting towards night, isn't it? Oh, hang on. We may have... A story scene. The vulture. Fifty yards ahead, the squad members spy a strange creature that looks like some kind of vulture. The creature is searching for prey, picking through the ash, distributing burrows and blocking their path. So let's see what we need to do here. The creature resembles a bird the size of a man, with a burnt body and scattered tufts of feathers. It walks on its wings. Preoccupied by its search for food, it has not yet noticed the squad. So, each of these characters tend to have different traits, so they are basically they're suggesting various things here. And that'll cost two uh, bits of wood out of our three. We could attack, wait for it to leave, or chase it away to keep travelling. I've had a lot of luck so far with stealth. And I think that might, if you, if you make successful choices in certain areas, I think that kind of like builds that up. But, and what we'll do is, let's wait for it to leave. The boring choice, but as I say, this is, what, this is what's done so well as well so far. The squad calmly waits, letting the vulture search and pillage the area. After an hour, the vulture leaves, the squad members are frozen to the bone. Ugh. So we've lost some things there. That's Oh, our warmth has absolutely plummeted there. Uh, we will probably have to make camp then. Once we've actually just checked out these supplies. You never know, we might get some extra firewood out of this. Yes, here we go. So let's see who's got the most energy. It looks like pretty much everyone's got plenty of energy, so... And Petra, you do some gathering. I'll go into your backpack. Uh, Carly might be the best person next because you've got plenty of space, although we can rearrange that anyway. And we have wood, so let's immediately make camp. There's a lot of management choices to be made here. Alright, first of all we need to put some wood on the fire, we've got plenty. So I'll just do it from random people's backpack. I've tried to distribute the supplies quite evenly, so if someone dies, and we can continue without losing too much. I think if you lose um, more than I think if you lose three or yeah three people I think that's the end of the game. Uh, medium fire that'll do. And uh, now let's see who needs what. Everyone's pretty much first aided up, so that's not a problem. Uh, most people are going to need food. In fact, let's just give food to everyone. We've got plenty. And let's get ev let's get everyone's food to the right to the start. Warmth is going to be a thing, but that's fine. This should be okay there. Uh, first, as I say, we don't need first stage, so I think that's pretty much all we need to do here, because uh, they'll they'll get the warmth from the fire. In fact, actually, they were chilled to the bone, so let's make it a really big fire. That's more like it. They did, they did seem a bit prickish about that. So, um, only so far, only Carly has got any energy issues, so let's see what we can do in terms of jobs. I think Carly will go and have a bit of a kip. So, you go into the rest slot. And that'll get you plenty of energy. Um, Guard-wise, danger is currently low, 18%. So we could get away with not guarding the camp. We could go we could go and explore. But what we could also... Oh, we could get two people to talk, but... Here's what we'll do. He was, he was a really... He was the tough guy. Um, there's, a, there's one guy who's a soldier. Although I have a horrible feeling that might actually be um, Carly. 
You've got to work out. It doesn't actually tell you, but who's who's good at what. So you have to sort of work it out for you, work this out for yourself. Um, I'll, what I'll do is I'll get Petra doing the. Mm, you're the stealth guy, I think. Now, dear, you're, you're the, I think you're, you maybe this is more of a scout thing. But let's send you out. I think you can do the guarding. And sing. I think I'll actually do more exploration for that. Although that uses up more stuff for you. I don't think you're so good at that. But let's have a go with that. See what we get out of this. Sing has returned and brought back one food and one wood. Nadir has returned with two food and one wood. Okay, that's okay. That's That'll do quite nicely. The firebugs. During the night, the squad is surrounded by small glowing creatures. The warm light calms them and they are lulled into a well-deserved and deeply restorative sleep. That's really good because previous events, random events like this at the campfire, have just basically discouraged my lads. This time, everything seems to be going okay. That was one of the few things that did go wrong in my in the first area for me. Everything else went so well. Not quite sure if that's because it was the first area going nicely on me or what. So okay, so that's um that's that first section. We can keep going with the fire. By the looks of it, though, we are pretty much topped out, and the danger is actually increasing. The longer you stay here, the more danger you'll get. And we could gamble for supplies, as I say, but there's probably no point at this point, so let's sod off. We are nicely warm. And off we bloody well go, lads. There's still, uh, in the distance, there is more stuff to gather, so let's let's pop over here to get this first batch. Ooh. Sometimes it can get a bit wiggly with the movement. There, there we go, I think. Just... I think they were stuck, stuck on a rock at the back there. Right, okay, so let's have a look over here. Let's try and rummage our way through here. Through this dirt pile. Oh, it's food! Look, looks like some delicious mushies. Alright, well, pretty much anyone can gather this. It looks like he distributed it nicely. There, there was actually a lot of food. But you, you can't get too comfortable because events could strip those out of our backpack at a moment's notice. Uh, we've been fairly light on events so far. Been attacked by wolves a lot in the first region, and you can choose your path in this as well as just like on a, on a small scale basis. You will get like multiple routes to take. I took the safer route <laughs> in the first region. One was long and windy, and the other one was wolfy. Right, okay, good already. That is rather sweet. Oh, holy shit! Okay, good. Let's go for. Yes, you haven't. You've got plenty of. Hang on a second. We're actually we're actually full up. Um, Sing can transport more, but you will be overloaded and lose energy. Um, honestly, Petra and Nadir would probably be best overloaded. Petra might give you the f food. Uh, did I even do that? Hang on. I don't think I did. I think that needs to be over into yours. Oh, oh no, it's okay. It's okay. It's fine. I'm not quite sure if I actually put everything in there, but I think we're okay. Oh no, Nadir is technically overloaded. Ooh. <laughs> Basalt fragments. Given its splintered state, this rock clearly wasn't formed recently. The vegetation in the area also confirms that there's been no eruption recently. And there's a whole... Oh, well, don't go over there. There's a whole encyclopedia thing. If you want to research all the stuff that you've already discovered. And onwards through the valley of the shadow of death, really. <laughs> I'm convinced there must be some secret supplies for me to find. But if you try to go off routes, of course, you are wasting time, potentially. In an ancient village, the squad reaches a ruin beneath, buried beneath the layers of volcanic rock and ash. One building seems more easily accessible than the others. Okay. Why not? Let's have a gander. Inside, there is little of interest, but the stone roof provides some insulation and much-needed shelter from the wind and ash. Uh, the squad members can rest here for a while and warm their bones. Um... I will rest, but I don't think we need it. They lay down their equipment, stretch and settle in. They decide to remain awake and vigilant, but the refuge provides some much-needed rest. If achievement unlocked, fiorily. <laughs> it says in the bottom right. Um, but not for you. Uh, the squad members begin to talk. Carly guides their discussion, encouraging each member to share their feelings. Oh, God. And listen to each other. That night, from beneath their scouts' masks, the sound of tears and laughter can be heard. Ooh, they're having a good old time. 
A few hours later, the squad sets off full of hope. Ah, oh, this is good. To be honest, this is this is probably a good thing because, although having said that, they were still fairly good. Warmth is warmth is probably what we needed more than anything. Rest, not so much, to be honest. Although, apart from you, you were, you, you probably needed the rest. That was a very um, positive outcome. <laughs> Quite surprised. The squad finds us, finds fresh tracks on the ground. Probably humans who are used to walking in the ash. Yeah, I haven't had any particularly bad things to show you at the moment. I'm done surprisingly well. Um, honestly, we've got plenty of first aid and food. The only thing that we don't have huge amounts of is wood. So I'm um, reluctantly going to leave the supplies behind. Let's cross. I think it's a. I was going to say bridge of, full of, uh, over water, but there doesn't seem to be very much water here in the post-apocalypse. Uh, what time is it? It's getting... Oh, it is... Night is now falling. Um... A camp. This may be unnecessary, to be honest. Um... Danger's incredibly low. I think, actually, they do need some food, so I think... We'll... We'll only set up a small fire here. We don't need any more than that. And we shall distribute food in the correct manner. And food from there as well. That's probably all we need to do. Let's just double check everything. Let's move that to there. So everyone's got some first aid. Um, wood also could be changed around a little bit. There, that'll do. Right. And what else does anyone need to do? Nobody really needs to do any resting, amazingly. So, but let's get them. To, let's get them having a bit of a chatty poos. Um, you, let's have a just double check. Yeah, everyone can have a bit of a yak, a natter. I've never had a, a, a full talkie session before. I still can't believe your family's ancestral poem actually broke the code. Everything connected easily, I only had to unravel it all. It's like Carly's ancestors somehow did the journey backwards. What? Dragging beacons behind them? I don't believe that for a second. Hmm. There's lots of lots of lore and stuff together from this. A trail of s oh <laughs> Pyroclastic clouds grow worlds on the horizon. The squad members watch the terrifying sight from afar. Jamie loses the ability to read. With the big the big words is the problem. Right. I think. Hopefully that's improved things. To be honest, I don't think that talking was completely necessary, but let's move onwards. Let's already restock up our food. Let's get someone else to gather this, just so someone who's got a bit more energy. There we go. Ooh. More vultures. A savage wrapped in swathes of cloth has been attacked by three gaunt vultures thirsting for blood. Well, we've been we've actually had good relations with the savages before. Like the um the wolves, like um, a group of savages earlier on, really respected us. So I think we should um I think we should um I think we should help out. We haven't actually done any combat -y type stuff before. But let's see what happens here. The scouts launch into action and attract the vultures' attention to them. The beasts notice their approach but give the poor savage and adolescent no respite. Well, so we haven't done any combat, but we have got plenty of food, so let's give this one a go. We've got seven food at the moment. Distract the vultures. The scouts attract the attention of the goat vultures by yelling and waving rations, drawing the creatures in their direction. The cheetahs chase them for se several minutes. We've lost food. I'm hoping that we don't get injured by the vultures. We may... Having placed the rations on a rock in plain sight, the squad members return to the battlefield safe and sound, letting the vultures enjoy their meal. Okay. Decent. Meanwhile, the savage has disappeared from the squad's sight. Ugh. Not quite the outcome I was hoping for, but all it cost us was a little bit of distraction food, and to be honest, we were fairly overloaded with food. Is that water? No, it's some kind of volcano mist. <laughs> or something. Ooh. Ooh. Stumbled across this. Unfortunately, this is wood, rather. Although we, we do kind of need wood. So let's see, who's going to gather this? I think you. Um, Carly. Yeah, it doesn't really matter who, I think. Across the rickety bridge. 
Mario Kart-esque bridge this. Shells go flying. Come on, keep moving. And we'll get some more supplies over there. I'm scouting the horizon for any sign of our goal. In the meantime, our food! Exactly what we need. I think Petra can get this. Oh my god, that's food for years! Hmm. I think we're okay. The rest can stay. I'm not going to overload us. We are starting to get a little tired. Another bridge. Slightly more sturdy, this one. No night is falling again. I've been able to ignore a lot of supplies because we're, we're so... Uh-oh. <laughs> that can't be good. Um, a vulture screeches in pain. Uh, close inspection reveals the vulture is ensnared in a trap. Okay, it's them, not me. The, this prey must belong to someone. Kill the vulture and dissect it for meat. Leave the prey where it is. Well, there's literally no point in getting the meat. Sorry, vulture. Better not take any risks. Well, there's literally no point at the, at the moment. Oh, look at that burst into blood. Barely minutes later, three savages, swathed in cloth and rudimentary camouflage, appear. Uh, they head over to the trap and kill the creature. They have not spotted the squad. I'm going to be diplomatic and go meet them. Hello! We're innocent travellers. Don't attack us, please. We've got loads of gold. I probably shouldn't have told you that. And Carly talks to them as she approaches, hands in the air, followed closely by the others. The savage hunters are surprised and mistrustful, but far from threatening. I've already proved my diplomacy in, in, in Act 1, so I'm hoping. Yeah, the savages tell them they are Western nomads. Most importantly of all, the beacon of the squad is looking for is in the middle of their camp. Yeah, I think we've I think we've chosen wisely and diplomatically here. The hunters tell the squad they have to leave. A few minutes later, they have completely vanished into the bushes with their prey. Yeah, my diplomatic approach is working so far. Good, frankly. Oh, yes, we need to camp, don't we? Um, is everyone knackered? Yes, I think we are starting to get a little knackered. I'll push on on the. I'll go to the other side of the bridge. Is everyone motivated? Everyone seems to be motivated. Food is starting to become an issue, and everyone's incredibly cold, so that's... yeah, okay. Let's camp. Now. One foot on the other side of the bridge. So we're going to need plenty of firewood here, I think. So onto the fire. Go all the woods. Even so. Oh yes, yeah, so that's full. 18% danger. Not, not great, but not terrible either. Food all round. I think you can give them more than one foods if they need it, but looks like they don't. Everyone's a little tired. Nadir's the least tired, by the looks of it. A Sing might... Mm, let's see. I think Sing will have to stand... Hmm. Someone's going to have to stand guard. We shall see. Unprotected at the moment. Feels bad, man. Well, maybe if we um, have one... We'll st do this in two sessions, and one person can guard, and then the other person can guard. And so Nadir can... You can guard, and everyone else can rest, I think. That should should all be good with any luck. Sounds in the dark. Um, during his night patrol, Nadir notices a creature with a, with a still breathing rodent in its mouth. Nadir believes he has recognised the gaze of a fellow human. Nadir is discouraged. Mm. Shit. It's fine, though. Everyone is now rested apart from Nadia. And what I'm tempted to do now, therefore, is now daytime. Oh no, it's not, it's night. Okay, so that's fine. Um, what we'll do is, I think, drag Nadia onto rest. Someone can explore. I think Petra, maybe. Maybe you are good for exploration. Minus three, that's a lot of stuff. What about you? What about you? Hmm. You can explore, then. And the others... We're still unprotected, really, aren't we? Um, okay. Well, maybe Sing can go and have a bit of a explore as well. Let's get some more supplies to replace all the stuff that we've used up. The danger is increasing. 58%, holy shit. Sing was rubbish. Um, on the upside, Carly has got wood and medical supplies. Medical supplies that we are not needing so far. Uh-oh. Nadir, mute and covered in dirt, slumped beside two fresh graves. Nadir is discouraged again. Oh god. 
We've all seen some shit. <laughs> God damn it. We better leave. We better get out of here. Right, onwards. So Nadir is, yeah, definitely a little bit um, discouraged. I can see something in the distance. I think we are approaching our destination, which is probably that scout camp. I'm having a jamboree somewhere. Uh, uh, savages. Savages camp, yes. Not scout camp. <laughs> so, I should say, shout, shout out to the um, rather ominous ambient music in this as well. It's got exactly the right level of doom. And also there's just the, the beauty of the landscapes, which you can sometimes just ignore while it's just like looking ahead at what looks like a large amount of people all in our way. Just little shadows ahead. And another thing I should say, just in case I, know I don't get injured during this bit of playthrough, <laughs> um, it's not just black and white, it's or grey, your monochrome, or whatever. You really notice when there's some blood. I mean, like, it, it, it's shockingly red in all the, in all the monochrome. Meanwhile, let's see. I don't really care who gets this. Nice. Plenty of supplies there. And unfortunately we spent so much time at camp kipping that it's already night time. Let's try and push on because I think we're almost at their camp so that should round us off. And also, I mean, look, we are st our stats are all fine. We've got plenty of energy. Uh, the only problem really at the moment is the fact that we are getting cold. We are currently in the mist, where, which does sap our warmth quite a bit. Hang on, we've got an encounter first. The stakeout. We're ha the squad stops and hides in a bush. To the north they can see the nomad encampment. In its centre is the beacon. We already know that. We were told. The squad has to retrieve the data from this beacon to continue its quest. The Dome of Domes! And then we go beyond the Thunder Dome. No, we don't. From what they can make out, there are two possible ways to access it. By the camp's well-guarded main entrance, or to the left, where there's a path around the camp. Well... The squad has a choice to make. Diplomacy or force, or a stealthy approach. That's easy enough. I can, I can make that decision. It's going to be the full frontal. Tops off, lads. <laughs> no, we're going to... I think I seem to have um, very good di um, diplomacy. <laughs> right, let's get our diplomacy out. Actually, where is the entrance? I think it's there. Is that a... Is that an entrance, or is it just background? I think I'm. I think I'm following a path here. We are getting very cold here. Oh, is this the wrong? Uh oh, that's the wrong way. I didn't mean to go this way. <laughs> uh oh, they cannot move around as a group. They would stick out like a star, sore thumb. However, one of them can venture forth alone. Ooh, I made a mistake here. Oh, Nadir? Well, Nadir is the the stealth lad, but unfortunately you're discouraged. And that's... Uh, question mark, uh, exclamation mark says, this choice could have negative consequences. Um, I think Petra, because you're kind of like, um, a bit more of a, like a tactical scouty type person. Le I think you're... I think you're the leader. The captain is sent into action. Although unused to infiltration, Petra is still capable of devising strategies on the spot. I was trying to do full frontal here, but... Ugh. Move into the shadows or disguise. Um, feels like stealth or cunning. Now let's choose the cunning attack. I say attack. By build bundling up in strips of stolen cloth, the squad member moves as if invisible. The beacon is in sight. How to get close? Wait for the right moment. Create a distraction to get closer. Well, there's another strategic option, I think. Let's try that. I'm going on feeling here. The squad member attracts the savages' attention elsewhere. By knocking over a torch and several crates far from the beacon, the squad member draws the camp towards the commotion. I think I'm hoping to try and play to the players, the squad member's strengths here. The camp inhabitants are in an uproar and began to frantically search for the intruders. Uh-oh. The squad members have precious little time to act and retrieve the, de the, uh, the data from the bacon. The data from the bacon. Yes, the bacon. Okay. Um... Where are we going here? Let's try and go around here. Not quite sure if I'm taking the right path here. I think I'm... I think it's, it's a guided thing. I don't, think, I don't think it's like a maze or anything. Chaos reigns in the camp. The squad's diversion tactics were too effective and now they must hurry. Um, 
As colleague hacks into the beacon's data and adolescent savage approaches, he seemed intrigued by their Lazarus uniforms. They have to ask facts, facts, act fast, kill the adolescent, or try to talk with him. It's tempting. I've never, I've always been so diplomatic. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to win. The squad tries to start with the savage. Suddenly, the squad recognizes the savage they saved from the vulture's talons earlier. Ooh, the savage falls silent, gives a knowing nod of the head. He then tries to distract the others, giving the squad the time needed to retrieve the data. Yes! Achievement unlocked. Hello, world. Once the data has been retrieved, the squad continues marching northward. To leave the area, they have to pass through a cave. They must hurry. All right, let's hurry. See, if you do good, what goes around comes around. And all that. See, we, we, we've been diplomatic all over their asses. So that was the stealthy approach. I was going to say, I was, I was hoping for the diplomatic thing, but I read the map wrong. That's the one thing I do get a little bit um, confused with this with this game is the, some of the movement. It can get a bit odd at times. Oh, I just stopped then because I ran out of clickiness. <laughs> this appears to be the cave. We cannot make camp in here, so there must be a this must be a special event type thing. I believe. It's also a horrible old cave. And we're also freezing cold. I really should have, in retrospect, possibly made camp um, before we went into the savages' place. Oh. 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 An underground lava lake. Ugh. The great, they take great pains to find their footing among the rocks, risking certain death with every step. The squad finally reaches the back of the cave with the data the squad has retrieved. Uh, they can finally set back. Oh, it's gone. <laughs> I didn't click anything. God damn it. <laughs> the mountain range achievement unlocked. Day 15, instead of the next beacon, the third squad. Okay, that's the old information. That's from the start of the mission. And this is the end of our expedition. Chapter 2, or Act 2, call it what you will. Uh, all the lads together. Day, this is day 33 by now. The third squad manages to leave the volcanic tundra as stealthy as possible, having escaped the vigilance of the nomads. Who knows if this was the right thing to do? Well, we're still alive, aren't we? They now head towards the Grey Mountains, drawing closer to their final destination with every day that passes. And let's see. Let's see what results we've got. All these events, all adding up to these things, all these stats that we're getting. No, oh, we didn't really seem to get much. Hmm. Didn't get nearly as much stuff as last um, as last time, which you didn't see. That was <laughs> before the video started. But my trust and distrust that stayed the same as last time. I know that much. Your tr your squad tries to stay as neutral and level-headed as possible in the face of danger. And scouts, your your squad is a level-headed unit, and the squad members do not privilege any one approach over the other, apart from combat, which we know do. <laughs> But we'll stop there. Um, intriguing little game, very meditative, very slow paced. Um, but I know a lot of people out there will really dig this. Uh, so thanks for watching. Do subscribe to Randomize User to be notified when new stuff goes live. Well, all the latest and best new indie games out there. The most intriguing stuff like this. And do check me out on Buy Me A Coffee if you want to support the channel and keep us going. Uh, links are on the screen and in the description. And bye for now.